party people. Welcome once again to a very special episode of the Party of One podcast, the actual play RPG podcast where the gaming table is always set for two. I'm your host as always, Jeff Stormer. As you may have noticed, this is a re-release of episode 174, Beam Saber with Austin Ramsey. The reason is Beam Saber is currently on Kickstarter. As of the time of me recording this intro and outro, uh, Beam Saber has funded, which is incredible. Side note, go to the show notes, back the game, get your copy of it. This is a great game. I heartily sign off on it. Go get you your game because it is super freaking cool. So the reason for this re-release, because the game is on Kickstarter, uh, we are actually our next episode, which will be episode 223, which will release on Thursday. This episode is releasing on Tuesday, will be the downtime portion, the other half of a typical session of Beam Saber played about a year apart, but who's counting? Uh, so this this is the first half of a two-part Beam Saber campaign series that uh, Austin and I played. We played the mission portion about a year ago. You'll hear the downtime portion on the next episode. So we wanted to release this so the two episodes were side-by-side side on the feed. But in honor of the game going to Kickstarter, in honor of Beam Saber becoming a reality, I wanted to do something a little special. So this is not just a re-release of episode 174. This is a special edition remaster, which is to say there are sound effects and music and voice effects. I had a lot of fun making this episode, and I really hope you enjoy it. With all that said, why don't we throw it over to me in the past so that he can get started with the show. Take it past me. Thanks, future me. This week, I'm sitting down with Austin Ramsey. Austin, thank you so much for coming on Party of One. Thank you for having me. So real quick, at the top of the show, why don't you take a moment and talk about uh, anything that you are working on, any cool projects, games in development, that sort of thing, that you might want the audience to know about? Uh, well, the big thing I am working on, which is why I'm here today, is Beam Saber, which is my... Forged in the Dark game that is focused on pilots, their vehicles, and the war that they struggle to get through. Uh, it's heavily inspired by Gundam, I would say is probably the primary inspiration, mm -hmm. but I'm also a big fan of Battletech and uh, Armored Core and Front Mission. I'm just a big old mech fan. Uh, but it doesn't have to be mechs. It can be used for other sorts of vehicles. There have been people who have... Uh, had their vehicle be a uh, big rig, just like a big old eighteen wheeler, and oh, someone I else had that. a and someone else had a Dodge Charger as their vehicle. Oh, Smokey and the Bandit! Oh, you've 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 hit my heart! You've hit my heart. <laughs> um, other than that, I'm the uh, primary GM for You Don't Meet in an Inn, another actual play podcast. So fabulous. So, uh, yeah, like you said, we are playing Beam Saber this week. We are we we have one with the traditional mech approach to the game, which I am very excited about. Though uh, yeah. my heart hurts a little bit at having learned that there's a big that pe that the people are out here playing big rigs. <laughs> yeah, there was a, a player who pointed out you could probably do the Battle of Britain with Beam Saber, which might be a bit odd of a fit, but I guess it could be done. Okay, yeah, I could see that. I could see that. I, I actually really like the flexibility of it. Now that you mention it, like, now looking it over, I really like that you can really tweak what, defi like, what defines vehicle. I think that's really interesting and clever. Yeah, the, uh, for anyone who's played Into the Breach will recognize that what counts as a mecha can be pretty darn broad mm -hmm. once you put your mind to it. So, uh, let's introduce our characters this week. Uh, if you, would you like to go first, or should I? Uh, should we maybe do the squad first? Oh yeah, or? let's introduce let's introduce our squad, and then we'll introduce our pilots, and then we'll get into the scenario. Yeah. So with Beam Saber, you're the players are all part of the same squad who are accomplishing hopefully the same goals, and the squad itself has a playbook. So we're going to be playing the Party Crashers, a scrappy mechanized cavalry squad, and uh, so that uh, gives us access to certain abilities and XP triggers. And so the abilities we've taken are Reavers and Formation, which uh, make our make it when we push ourselves and our vehicles a little uh, less dangerous. And then also when we work together, we get a benefit. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're making our headquarters in an old armory. Yes, uh, just that old, like one of those old decommissioned, you know, probably has a bar in the front because it doesn't seem to be running a lot of... Like, it doesn't seem to be used for a lot else. They've thankfully kind of looked the other way as we have loaded very dangerous, very expensive cargo into the back and said, it's fine, it's just boxes. 
<laughs> yep, that's probably the uh, the hidden upgrade that it has. It's a bar in front. <laughs> bar in the front, mechs in the back. Really the perfect building. The reverse mullet of bases. <laughs> oh my goodness. So yeah, that's our squad. Um, I'm going to be playing. My pilot is Axel Mulroney, uh, codenamed Dollar Sign. Uh, an ex-military soldier who, in his time in the military, was a a small arms dealer, had struck up, you know, had, had a very profitable side business selling off, not, like, dangerous or, like, elaborate or, like, expensive weapons, but, like, if you needed a, a box of, if you needed a box of pistols or, like, a crate of, of shells, he he was the person that could, like, you know, grease a few palms and make sure that it gets underway. I imagine he might be the reason that we have these bar, these this this warehouse contact or this armory contact is somebody that he probably like. Somebody needed a tank, and he was like, "Yeah, I can get you a tank. I can get you a <laughs> tank by four thirty if you need a tank." <laughs> yeah, uh, and I'm playing Kesser Drock, call sign Red Eye, and he was uh, uh, an importer exporter in the family business. Back in uh, the territory of the Adamant Council of Nor. Until he got sick of that, sick of his folks, sick of the Norish culture, and absconded with all the money. And then, since then, he's been slowly blowing it all on failed business ventures, which he swears aren't his fault, that it's due to interference from uh, others, such as his rival Cage, the smuggler. And, uh... Now is met up with Axel to try and try and make a go at arms dealing. Mm -hmm. uh, Axel's rival is a man named Terwilliger. Uh, Terwilliger is a a very dangerous and reckless mercenary. Specifically, um, specifically, once upon a time when Axel was still in the uh, in the army, when Axel was still in the like in the service. Uh, Terwilliger was, they had to, they, Terwilliger was basically running a job for a rival power. Axel was deployed to try and, like, stop him and bring him down. And, unfortunately, Axel, uh, became badly scarred by some very, very deadly chemical weapons. Yikes. Uh, it was, and... These, these were weapons that were, like, highly confidential. They were highly dangerous. They were extremely deadly. Axel was lucky to get out alive. But the problem was, these were weapons, these were chemical weapons that nobody was supposed to have except our, like, top brass. So when, when a mercenary showed up with it, there was a big controversy of, like, how could this, how could these chemical weapons just go missing? Well, obviously, it was the guy that we know has been selling pistol, has been selling small arms. Surely he just took a bigger job, which is why I'm now working out of an old armory instead of out of a very fancy military base. Yep. So that's a, a quick go over of our characters' histories, tragedies, and openings, which mm -hmm. are important parts of the, the characters. Um, and if uh, they get expressed during gameplay, we'll get XP at the end of the session. Heck yeah. Uh, oh, another thing that we forgot to mention about our squad is that normally squads have a patron faction, mm -hmm. whether they're working for a democracy, a corporatocracy, oligarchy, theocracy. Um, I'm forgetting one, but that's okay. Is that theocracy? However, Did you say theocracy? I don't recall. <laughs> All right. But uh, we are bucking that. We're going to go independent, which normally in long-term play means that you're going to have a harder time of it because you'll have less supplies to heal yourselves, repair your vehicles, refuel, and get paid. But uh, not so important with a one-shot like we're mm -hmm. doing here. Fabulous. So yeah, yeah. We, uh, we open on... We open at the start of a mission, right? We open... We open... Or do we want to open with, like, taking the job? Where do you want to start? On the field or, or taking the job? Uh, well, we should probably open with taking the job, or at least allude to it, because we'll need to make an engagement roll okay. to determine our starting position. Got it. 
So I think that means we open. I think that means we open at the bar. We open at the bar half of our our warehouse. Um, it is having grown up around American Legion halls. I can very clearly picture like the surroundings. The shuffleboard table takes up the entire back half. Like it, I think the shuffleboard table is long and is essentially the separation between this is where the bar stops and this is where like the armory begins. <laughs> and there's stools, there's a lot of there's a lot of like ceremonial guns along the walls and flags from really factions that may not even really be around this region. Yep. They're just collecting flags. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh I think I'm sitting at the bar leaned up against it with a uh, with a Caesar in one hand and a tablet in the other scrolling through uh, some business proposals and I think I am uh, I think I, I am this is the one place normally because he's so badly scarred uh, Axel wears sort of a very thin, like, chromium metal mask, a little bit Destro-esque. Somewhere between Destro and the Phantom of the Opera. And I think this is the one place that he doesn't wear the mask, so it's, like, sitting next to him on the bar as he's leaned back. Uh, he's got and like, a very elaborate kind of hurricane glass where it's got the big bulbous and it flourish. It's a very large, <laughs> elaborate, mixed cocktail drink that being this being this bar is like tastes like gasoline. Ugh. And he's just <laughs> sitting back like Ugh. like he is so thoroughly in his element it is almost disarming. What what's Axel wearing? Uh I think he's still wearing like military so very beaten down and kind of wrinkled military uh, like a military dress gear but like the jacket is open revealing like a a t-shirt and like he's just uh, he's in this is what his normal dress clothes are right like this is his anime reference sheet is the military jacket open with t-shirt underneath (laughs) um Kesser, uh, I'm wearing a, a brown suit with a white shirt and a red tie, and uh, that is also his like standard look. Mm-hmm. He basically doesn't go anywhere without his suit, which is uh, it can conceals the fact that it's woven such to be armored. No, oh, that's very but good. I, I think that I think that you know that, mm-hmm. but um, and we. So, oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was, I was going to say, is this where we want Scratch to come in? I think this is where Scratch... I think, yeah, I think Scratch is, like, meeting us here, right? Like, I think... I think that's... I, I think just before Scratch walks in, Scratch being our our, uh, our faction contact, right? Yeah. Um, just before Scratch comes in, I, I kind of... I think I lean to you as I'm, like, awkwardly comfortable in this atmosphere, and I'm like, business 101, kid. You business meet, 101? Business 101. You meet your client where you feel comfortable. That's a power move. Write that down. Uh, I think... I think I, I just shake my head. Like, I grew up in a, like, very business-focused family. I'm not, like, I agree wholeheartedly, but uh, I'm oh, yeah. not, just not going to comment. Oh, yeah. I, I'm just... I'm just steamrolling right Pat. Like... I, yeah, we, we get a long shot of you just, like, rolling your eyes as I lean back, like, I'm really helping someone out today. <laughs> uh, so a detail about Scratch, and I don't know if we want to lean into this, but they're one of the example uh, contacts in mm-hmm. the rules, and they are a proxy, which means that they are a digital entity. We don't have to use that if we want to. Um but in, in Beam Saber, there are digital entities called proxies, which are sort of like advanced versions of Siri. They handle mm-hmm. people's uh, calendars. They take messages. They uh, set alarms, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know if we want Scratch to be one of those or just a person. I, I like... Here's the thing. I like Scratch being a proxy partially because I like... The, his, the, the image that I immediately get is Axel like talking about. So the plan is we're gonna lowball them. We're gonna we're gonna you know 
you know, the thing is, we've got a lot of jobs. I know we don't have, and then Scratch, and then Scratch just sort of like digitally appears. <laughs> yep. And we're, and it's just, yeah, we're, we're, it's, look, this is, this is, this is, ru- this is running the most basic, co oh, Scratch! Hi! <laughs> so nice to see you. Uh, do you want me to take Scratch or do you? Uh, I can take Scratch if you want. Sure it's thing. It's up to you. It's up to you. Uh, all right, I'll, I'll take Scratch. Then. All right, sure. Sounds good. Okay, so Scratch appears, and uh, they are wearing a, a sundress, mm-hmm. which is just like a vaporwave landscape. And because they're a digital entity, it's like a window into oh. a vaporwave landscape. Yep. So as they move, it's like it the image pans. Mm-hmm. And uh, their head is just a devil emoji. Mm. Just like 2D devil emoji, not even 3D. Scratch, it is just so lovely to see you. How are you? I am doing well, and it's always a pleasure to see the two of you. And how are you, how are you doing today? That looks like a lovely beverage of gasoline you have there, Axel. Oh, it's, it puts hair on the chest, is what it does. It's... that's... It's really about, it's really not, it's about all of the senses. Can we just get to business? Oh, of course, of course. Uh, so the task of that I have been told to bring before the two of you is that Doctors Beyond Stars, uh, they are moving a small convoy to Hollington. I don't know if you heard about the incident that happened there recently, but... There was an attack on the town. It's looking like it came from the Jovangelians to the north of them, uh, as Hollington is held by the Church of the Celestial Myriad. But the doctors, they obviously don't especially care about borders. Of course not. And they just want to go and help the injured and devastated in Hollington. And they need the two of you, to escort them there, because who knows who might stand in their way, especially since they're carrying all that valuable medical supplies. So, I mean, and I, th- I think I throw a quick look over to... I think I throw a quick look to Kesser, and I'm like, so, that sounds mostly on the level, but I do wonder why you come to us for an escort yeah. gig. Yeah, we're a... S- I mean, maybe it's just because we're a small team. They don't want to draw attention. Who's, whose side are you on? <laughs> I'm just talking this through. Uh, and Scratch says, uh, Well, as for the reason that they've hired you, they haven't told me either, but I suspect it's because you are a third party, not connected to... The Myriad or the Jovangelians. Probably not a lot of independent contractors working the scene, especially in hot zones. So I think I can, I can see that. Yes, they were, I believe, looking at hiring one of the uh, Exodus Republic Incorporated squads, but they were out of place, from my understanding, too far north. You see. Hmm. Well, you know. Feels great to be a second choice. So, uh, but uh, yeah, I think we can take the gig. I mean, you know, we are, uh, I'd say busy, but you popped in at the wrong time. So I think that we could probably make this work. Yes, you do seem available. Of course, the doctors have some uh, requested directives on your behavior while you're engaging in this mission. Of course, as they Uh, always do. Yes. So the first is that you're only permitted to use force in self-defense. No preemptive engagement. It's bad for appearances. Speaking of that, no looting, requisitioning, stealing, and or destroying civilian, commercial, or governmental property. We are there to help. Uh, Are you you here in this castle? Who do they think we are? Really? I have never stolen a day in my life. Scratch. I cannot believe this. You would you would paint me as a common criminal. Indeed. Lastly, no threatening or employing force against civilians. Again, we are there to help. 
Oh, yeah, I mean, unless it's in self-defense. If a civilian comes at me, I make no promises. That was a joke. That was, I'm kidding, of course. The Scratch's, like, unmoving devil <laughs> emoji face does not respond in any fashion. Even as they speak, the mouth doesn't move mm-hmm. or, like, throb or anything. Yeah, we'll t- we can take the gig. That's wonderful to hear. Do you have any questions before I leave? So you said the battle, battle, the incident, sorry, I, I know we all like our lingo. The incident is wrapped. Nothing, no, no, nothing expected. No parties expected to be present as we make our way through. Uh, well, satellite imagery is rather thin due to the debris cloud and low orbit destroying all of the satellites. Uh, however, word is that the conflict between the Myriad and the Jovengelians has moved f- much further north, closer to their shared border. Oh, well, good. That's Exodus territory. Hopefully all three of them will fight Cloud it out, and we just kind of slide our way in. Sounds simple enough, right? I hate those words, Axel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, why do you think I say them? <sighs> Uh, I think that might be the scene, right? Yep, I think that's exactly the end of the scene. Okay, so let's plan the mission. All right. So are we already have our employer. It's Doctors mm-hmm. Beyond Stars. The target... Ah, the target is the Cult of Earth Found, as uh, they are the ones who are in control of Hollington. Our, je- our objective is to get the doctors to Hollington to aid the people. Mm-hmm. We already went over the rules of engagement. Mm-hmm. So now we pick the tactic. Uh, this is the method that we're going to use to accomplish our objective. There's assault, which is open violence against the target. Deception, luring, tricking, and manipulating the target. Scientific, engaging with technological power. Social is when we negotiate a bargain with and persuade the target. Uh, Stealth is for taking action undetected. And transport is when we're carrying cargo and people through danger. So transport sounds like the natural fit. Mm -hmm. But I also feel like deception. I feel like there's an argument. We could make an argument for deception given that our specialty is blowing things up. And we were told not to blow up any buildings, but uh, I mean... Having a military patrol sail through, catch wind of anybody that might still be hanging around, and giving our colleagues a chance to run in underneath. So, if we go with deception, what's the method of deception? I think the method of deception would be a catch, like distraction, for lack of a better term. So, we're going to engage... Uh... Any targets along the way while the doctors hurry by is the idea? Yeah, that's my idea. We could also go with transport or stealth. Are you, how, are, how, are, how are you feeling, Kesser? Because I think, I, I feel like we have the guns to, we have a big shiny thing to distract people with. That's, I know that's where Axel is thinking. Hmm. Stealth would probably be gentler on our profit margins. Uh, you do know how to speak my language. Uh, but it's pretty, it can be pretty hard to hide a full convoy of, uh, doctor transports, not to mention our two, uh, mechs. That's, that's the rub. Yeah. Uh, I think you might have the right of it with deception. I think that's, that feels, like you said, we can't hide, we can't necessarily hide our big shiny, our big shiny killbots. But yeah. we can certainly we can certainly use that fact to try and hide the others. Indeed. So with the engagement role, this will uh, determine our position when we encounter our first obstacle. So we start with one die for plain old luck. Is this mission bold? I would say so, but I, I could see it going either way. I think so. I think it probably is, because we're heading into hot, potentially hot, probably hostile territory. That, and we are also, we are also putting ourselves directly, we are putting a target directly on our backs. 
Yeah, for true. the sake of our for the sake of our transport. So that's plus one die. Mm-hmm. Is the mission especially complex? I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah. Uh, does the mission exploit the target's vulnerabilities? I wouldn't. I probably wouldn't say so, but I also wouldn't say it's ineffective against the target. I agree. So no change there. Does the squad receive external support for the mission? Um, I don't think either of us called in any favors. No, we I do, wouldn't say so. We do have our rover fire team to call upon. However, that's not external support. Right. Uh, is anyone interfering with the mission other than the target? It doesn't sound like it. Um, so he, here's sort of the thing that we'll have to decide mm-hmm. is normally this would be something decided by the GM if okay. they've planned out an outside uh, factor coming in. So do we think that we'd want to call upon uh, any anyone outside of our expected operations to come in and cause us trouble? Um... You know what? I kind of do. I kind of feel like <laughs> I feel like there's I, I, I especially because we have our rivals or we have our rivals as mercenaries and profiteers. I feel like we are going to be far from the only people on the scene. Yeah. OK. So, yes, in that case. Yeah, so that's, that's a take... minus one. And are there any other factors affecting the mission? Anything that benefits or hinders us in our actions? I think that the benefits and hindrances would balance out here because I think they're both one in the same, which is that this is a this is a combat zone. I think that's beneficial for cover, but it's also problematic because it means that people can be hiding anywhere. It's also beneficial because like the the transport that we're giving, I think people are going to, you know, the people on the ground, the people in the battle site are going to see that and like be willing to help us. But that also presents means that, like, if word catches out to the to anybody that there's medical supplies, it's a risk. So I think all things considered, it balances out. Yeah, okay, makes sense. So, uh, in that case, we're only rolling one die for our engagement, because right. our bold got cancelled out. So, do you want to roll the one die? Sure can. That's going to be a generic roll, correct? Uh, fortune roll, but... Fortune roll. Number of dice, one. I got a two. You got a two. Okay. Not so great. That, no, that is very bad. That means we start in a desperate position. Mm. Uh, so, let's see. I think probably what that is, is that we are driving from Journey City mm-hmm. to Hollington with our convoy. Oh, not a problem. Uh, And what might be our first obstacle, and how is it so desperate? Uh, Maybe it's a a, a Celestial Myriad checkpoint. Mm. I like that. Um, And how many... How big of this con... How big is this convoy? I think one large... uh, an 18 wheeler because i'm throwing in an 18 wheeler here mm-hmm. so like an 18 wheel basically trans like military tra- style transport you know covered up with uh with all of our our various doctors and like boxes of equipment kind of scattered and then about maybe four to six smaller either single person cars or jeeps or humvees you know v- smaller vehicles ranging from like a car to a humvee okay uh, so I'm going to put two clocks okay. on. Uh, the four tick clock will be the health of the uh, of the truck. Mm-hmm. And then the six tick clock will be the health of the smaller vehicles. Okay, cool. And I'm going to also put in a... S- s- how hard do you think it'll be for us to get from Journey City to Hollington? As far as to get from Journey City to Hollington, probably I think a six clock would be good. Yeah, nice I thought so six too. Clock. So, um, I'll call that clock arrival. Mm. All right, so we've got those clocks, and with every successful action we get, we can add ticks to the arrival when it's appropriate. Cool. 
All right. So there is this checkpoint up ahead. What's in the checkpoint? Um, I think they are... I think it's probably... I'm going to say it's, it's, it's like two tanks, right? Like two large sort of hover tanks. And they, okay. they're, they're locking it down specifically because we had already kind of mentioned this, but like, we, I think there's already been reports of like, immers- of like looting and mercenaries like in the area and scavengers. So they're basically like checking anybody that's coming in and out to make sure that you're here, that you're not here or that you're, you're affiliated to make sure that you have the proper clearances and the proper paperwork to get in and that you're not coming in to ransack. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, I think we approach. Um, why don't you describe the vehicle you're in? Uh, the vehicle that I'm in is, uh, I didn't name it, but I think it's got to be, it's got to be, it's got to be just like romper. It's a, it's a, it's an Argyle, it's an Inexus Argyle, and Inexus is the manufacturer, Argyle is the model. Uh, it is, so I am in, I am in Romper, it is an, an Inexus Argyle quadrupedal, uh, assault, quadrupedal assault vehicle. It is an all-terrain, you know, combat vessel. It is a quadrupedal thing with big, long, sort of not, not jet- accented or like functional wings they just are kind of wings that are lined underneath with smaller machine guns and laser cannons Mm -hmm. and um it has what is sort of a like an eagle or a lion head and on its head is basically a very large underneath its kind of chin is a very large laser cannon (laughs) and the whole thing is sort of patchwork and beaten down I have clearly been riding this thing very hard in the time since I have left the military. Uh, and I'm I'm in uh, my vehicle's name is Civil Unrest, and it is a Redall's Workshop gunslinger. Mm-hmm. It's a uh, bipedal. It's got humanoid arms, and its arms uh, end in uh, machine guns, and mm-hmm. uh, it's got. Uh, well-made boosters on its back to be move around the battlefield quickly and uh, an armored sort of dome-like head with a sensor array sticking out of it which reminded me something we forgot to do was pick our our pilot load it might not come up but it is important we take it in case one of us in case we decide to get out of the vehicle Mm -hmm. so do you want to take a light medium or heavy load uh, I'm gonna take a. I'm gonna take a medium load. Yeah, I'm gonna do likewise. So what that does is, if you have a light load, you're less conspicuous and more agile on your mm-hmm. feet. And then if you're heavy, you obviously can carry more, but people can tell that you're like loaded for war, and you're a bit slower as well. Um. So yeah, so there is this checkpoint up ahead. And I think as we approach the uh, cannons turn toward us and over the radio comes comes a woman's voice and she says, Halt, no one's allowed inside of the lands of the faithful at this time. You'll have to turn around and go back. I'm going to hop on a private channel with, uh, I think my, my, my face appears in inside civil unrest like so um are we are we glad handing this or are we straight are we jumping straight to uh distraction uh well the doctors are still here so i think we should at least try and talk through this right okay don't want any stray rounds no that's your right as you think You've got, you've, you've got this. All right, let's, let's see what we can do here. And I, I hop onto the, I hop onto the, to the call with the, hop onto the call and I'm like, yes, um, as you can see, we are a, uh, medical convoy seeking to provide humanitarian aid to the sort of war-torn region. This is, 
I, I would hope that perhaps we could reach some sort of mutually uh, amicable agreement for all parties involved. We just want to do good for everyone in the sector. Uh, I think the the response is, yeah, that's what the last group of scavengers said they were. Show us some proof. Uh, and I, I hesitate for a moment, and I kind of lean back, and I say, all right, that's fine. We have, um, you may feel free to, uh, and I, I click onto the, the private channel between Kessler and I so that he can hear this. I'm like, well, you can inspect our resources. You can see the credentials of the people in the transport. They, we, we, you know, we, we have accredited, accredited medical professionals. We should be, we should be fine with you climbing on board and seeing what we've got backstage. We have, we have nothing to hide. I think just in your video screen, you see me nodding. Yeah, we have nothing to hide. We're fine. So I think that that's probably going to be a role on your part. Okay. Uh, so we are in a desperate position. Clearly this checkpoint is twitchy from uh, previous mm -hmm. bad encounters. Yep. Um, and so you're saying we got nothing to hide. Check us out all you want. So I think that that is probably a standard effect. Okay. It yeah. doesn't sound like we're trying to hide anything, but we're also not really uh, offering any extra. I would probably call this sway. Yeah, that sounds right to me. Okay. So am I adding anything or just rolling the one dice for sway? Uh, well, if you want more dice, um, I could assist you by spending stress. You we could think we could think of a devil's bargain, which would give you an additional die at a guaranteed consequence, or you could push yourself by spending your own stress. I'm going to I'm going to push myself a little bit and get at least the second dice. Okay, so you'll have to spend 2 stress and then you can choose to either take improved effect or an additional die. I'm going to take an an additional die for 2 stress. Okay. I think I am like I think I am I am just kind of like smiling and, and putting on as much charm as I as I can to just like you know put like get them into a position where they're just where they where they're willing to at least look the other way for a moment okay uh I do you want my want me to assist or yeah that would be that would be great okay I think I I'm going to like put my mech into sleep mode. So the weapon sort of lower, it sort of hunkers down a little bit. Um, it's not all the way off, but it might take me a second to turn back on. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, I am going to spend two stress because I have two connections with you, mm -hmm. which means that you get to choose two benefits and the options are improved position, an additional die, or improved effect. I'm gonna take improved position. And let's take an additional die. Let's roll three dice. Okay. Uh, let me mark off that two stress. So that is going to be sway. We're taking improved position, so we go from desperate to risky. And our effect is standard. And we're rolling three dice. So should I go ahead and make the roll? Go right ahead. All right. I got a two, three, and a four. So that's a four. That is a partial success. Okay. Okay. Uh, so that means that, hmm, what do we think the consequence should be? I think what it is, so that we can, we, I, think to, I think to really, really kick things into high gear. And really, really like get the get in get into our big our big mech action scene. I think I know what the consequence is. I think that like this takes a while, right? Like they're really like twisting in the knife and like making us sweat. And your your mech is powered down. I think I have followed your lead and powered mine down. And that is when overhead, like because the the tanks are like directed at us, so that we don't move. Our mechs are powered down. Overhead, we just see shadows and flying vehicles like tear overhead. And clearly, like, someone has seen us getting, like, us getting, like, watched. 
and is moving and is going to just tear past the checkpoint using us as their distraction. Oh, okay. So, um, is that, uh, <laughs> is that the uh, the people at the checkpoint freaking out and thinking that we were acting as a distraction and attacking us? Or is it that those other people are, like, on the scene now and are also a- an additional threat? I think it's that. And I think further, I think furthering that, I think they have, I think that they are trying to, like, they have laid down some fire at the tanks to try and, like, disable the tanks, the mechs, whatever. They're just laying down fire to basically tear past us so they don't have to worry about it later. Okay, so maybe we each take one point of... Di- one. Uh, uh, each of us takes a level one damage as All we're right. sort of hit by the uh, the shockwave of the blasts hitting the tanks. Yeah. Um, so, like, level one damage shook or something? Shook is great. Okay. Um, I am going to uh, use my ability Meat is Cheap, Save the Metal, which mm-hmm. is my ace ability, which lets me, um, when I take damage to my vehicle, instead I can choose for my pilot to take that damage instead. So, like, inside of the cockpit, my, like, face slams against the view screen, and I've got, like, a bloody nose. Mm-hmm. But, but civil unrest is fine. Mm. I think I'm just like scrambling. I think I think I think I've probably like gotten a chunk taken out of out of my my haunch. Right, like there's just a big gaping mess of a hole in my in my mech, and as I'm just now screaming like, "We got company! We got company! You want to wrap up your little? You want to wrap up your little? All of this? I got no words. You want to wrap things up so that we can." possibly survive this and not get bombed out from above i swear i swear with bureaucrats these days <laughs> uh she comes over the comms and i think she says we aren't equipped to deal with aerial targets if you are go right ahead we'll let you through all right let us through let our doctors through and we and you got yourself a deal yeah, go on, and I Perfect. think that the tanks roll off the road, and I think that that adds uh, two ticks to our arrival clock. Perfect. For uh, your standard effect success. Um, so to deal with those uh, aerial threats, uh, civil unrest powers up, and I am going to... You good to fly, bloody nose? Yeah, it's... Uh, <laughs> I think, like... Through the camera, you you can see me like I've got a handkerchief out. Mm-hmm. And I'm wiping off my view screen, getting the blood off of it. Perfect. That was there. Uh, so I'm going to mark off a fine mobility suite and a fine machine gun. And so the boosters on the back and in the feet of civil unrest fire up, and it leaps into the air turning the uh, triple barrel machine guns onto the enemy uh, flight squadron. And I think uh, if we're going maximum anime, I think what happens right now is I pop off my, my like, smiling, like, uh, comedy face mask, and I put on, like, uh, sort of a something, something akin, something between, I think I put on something between, like, a Boba Fett style, like, combat mask. Mm-hmm. And I, like, swap out my face mask, and I'm like, let's go to work. This is the plan. <laughs> distraction boost. Distraction is the name of the game. We catch we catch their attention. We hold it long enough for us to get where we're going. And then we get out. Sounds good. So, right. uh, are, I, I, I think we're probably still in a desperate position, right? Yeah, Do you we've think? definitely, they've got the, they've, they've got the higher, they've got height on us, they've got, They've got their guns already aimed at us. We are basically, we are, we are trying to get out from underneath them. So yeah. Okay. Uh, in that case, I'm going to open fire on them. Okay. But my point is not to uh, actually shoot them down. I'm just trying to get the attention of the wing mm-hmm. and uh, draw them out of position so that they have a harder time to come around and hit hit the uh, convoy cool um 
So I'm gonna use maneuver for that. Um, hmm. Oh, okay. I'm also going to use my ability broadcast, which I took from the empath playbook. Mm -hmm. Since uh, it's just the two of us, we decided we were going to take uh, two special abilities mm -hmm. instead of just the usual one. And so I took one of mine from the empath playbook. So when I push myself, in addition to the normal benefits, I can do one of the following. Use my mind to instill a powerful, undirected emotion in others, mm -hmm. or paralyze a person with my mind or voice. So I am going to push myself for three dice, and then I am also going to instill uh, a hatred for civil unrest in these, mm. in, in these pilots. I think I'm seeing the hologram of your face, and I'm just like, that's, you're doing what you do. Yeah. <laughs> I think my eyes, like, shine slightly red with, like, an unusual glow mm -hmm. as, as I activate this uh, psychic power of mine. Mm -hmm. um, so what's my position and effect? We said desperate. I would say, yeah, I would say, I would say we're desperate right now. I think if you, I think depending on how we do here, we could probably get out of a desperate position, but I think we're desperate right now. Okay, effect what... is probably at least standard. Yeah, yeah, standard sounds right Standard sounds well. right. Okay, so. Do you need me to assist? No, I'm at three dice with pushing yeah, right. myself, so I think I'm probably good. You're probably good. All right, number of dice, three. Hey, that's a five. That's Fabulous. okay. But a desperate consequence is rough. Um, what do you think happens to me with this desperate consequence? Um, I think that you... I think you take off, right? Like, I, or I think, yeah, I think you take off. I think that, you know, you are... They hate you, right? And these are, these are trained mercenaries. I think this is when we get our first shot of, like, inside of one of their cockpits and we see Terwilliger... And he's got, you know, uh, I'm trying to decide what kind of what kind of heal I want him to be. Ah, so you're invoking your uh, your yeah. rival? Yeah. All right. So rivals have special rules because they are extra dangerous. So when a rival appears on screen, we put up an eight tick clock, mm -hmm. and until uh, how do you spell your villager? T E R W I L L I G E R. So, uh, Terwilliger remains a threat until we fill that clock. Of mm -hmm. course, we don't have to fill it to complete the mission. If you add any ticks to completing that clock, you'll get an XP. Mm. And also, Terwilliger gets access to rival moves, which is that once per pilot, uh, he is it he or they? He. He, he can just inflict a consequence uh, at whatever position we're at, mm. whether regardless of our level of success or even if we've made a roll. Just he's good and he can mm -hmm. hurt us anytime he wants once permission. I think he's going to hold on to that for now, but I think it's important that he be on the scene. Yeah. So I think, but I think what happens is like, he basically drops, like, a bomb and, like, knocks you out of the sky and you come, like, crashing to the ground. So is that a level three damage or is there a... a is it re lower damage and then additional consequence of some form? I... I think it might just be level three damage. Oof. Okay. Um, or I, you can take level... Or you can lower that damage, but... Um, or you can lower that damage, but the, uh, the, the, the truck and vehicles are exposed. I'm going to say if, if you can take, you can take less damage, but it, but it will mean either the truck or the vehicles will take that damage instead. Oof. Okay. Well, we're trying to get them through here. Uh, so I'm going to declare armor. Okay. And I'm going to spend it immediately. Mm hmm And, uh, so let's see. I think... The bomb. So, so does with, when I'm spending the armor, is that going to reduce the damage uh, from level three to what? Two or one or negated? Um, we'll drop it to one. Drop it to one. 
Okay. Uh, what's the name of the uh, of the damage that I've taken? Um. Uh, we'll call it uh, scorched. Scorched. It is. It was definitely an. In, it was definitely an illegal incendiary device, which I think is how we know. Like, oh no, that's Terwilliger. Okay. <laughs> um. So. I think what I do is that I position civil unrest in such a way as to, uh, as I hit the ground, I twist enough and put put my mech between the explosion and mm-hmm. and the uh, our, our mm-hmm. the explosion and our wards, and I am going to again use uh, meat is cheap, save the metal, mm-hmm. and uh, so. The, the cockpit heat takes the brunt of the flames because of the way I've positioned it and so it heats up and so I inside like all of the, the controls are like hot to the touch so like my hands are getting burned as I'm operating the mech and so I take level 1 scorched mm-hmm. instead of civil unrest I love it so I think what I'm going to do I mm-hmm. think as soon as I see the incendiary device, I just kind of, like, we just see, like, a shadow fall over my mask, and I'm just like, okay, I can work with this. This work, this fits in the plan. All things according to the plan. And uh, my mech romper leans back on its back legs and its front legs, like, lock in, and you see that, like, the three toes on each and then, like, lock, like, tear into the ground and lock in. And I'm just like, ready, aim, fire. <sighs> if I can, if I can, if I can... Do some damage to Terwilliger and move move our move our arrival clock along at the same time. That would be ideal. So I'm okay. just trying to open fire at him specifically to let him know that I'm here, so that like he sees me and not the not the convoy. All right. The more uh, time we can buy for that convoy, that's that's what the mission's all about. Yeah. Uh, so I think you're in a risky position now mm-hmm. because of. Um... The, the distraction I posed to the rest of the wing earlier. I'm going to um, call this destroy, I think. Yep. Using uh, raw destructive power yeah. against them. I'm just unloading that like front laser cannon and it's just, you know, shadow, like the area kind of darkens for a moment and then bright blinding light as I like try to tear into Terwilliger's like jet mech. Cool. Alright. Um... Risky. What would we what would we call that effect? I think that is probably standard. Okay. Um. Let's and see. That's two dice. I think I'm gonna. I think I am also going to push myself again. For effect or dice? For. If I push myself for effect, what does that what does that get? It that'll pushes get, up the great effect. Yeah, and that'll get more ticks either on the arrival clock or the Terwilliger clock, depending upon where you want to I focus I think that's what I gotta efforts. do. I think I gotta push myself for... So that means that puts me up to four stress, which means I well, take a scar. Well, hold, hold on. Okay. Um, you don't you don't take a scar at four stress. Okay. The scars you take when you max out your stress. Oh, got it. But when you're pushing with a vehicle action... You have to exhaust one of your quirks. Ah. Because it's your vehicle that's uh, getting stressed out, so to speak. Got it. So, which of those quirks are you going to exhaust, and how are you employing it? Uh, I'm going to exhaust my heavy step, which is... um, the, The romper was designed... This is kind of what the romper lives for, right? The romper is designed to... This gun is essentially too large for a mech this size (laughs) and so like and so like literally what it has to do is like it takes a moment and which is why like the claws lock into the earth and it basically like haunches like leans back and like locks into position and basically turns into like an immobile mounted cannon nice all right so exhaust that quirk exhausted that quirk and take that extra effect. All right, so that's gonna be two dice. That is a six. That is a six. And are you are you trying to um, attack Terwilliger? What's what's your focus here? Attacking Terwilliger or 
uh, working on getting the convoy out of here. I think it's working on getting the convoy out. Okay, so you're not trying too hard to hit Terwilliger, just, uh... I think I'm f- trying to graze him and, like, to knock him off, to knock him off balance and just basically send him a little bit of a love letter. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, because you got great ef- effect, uh, that adds three ticks to the arrival clock, which means it's at five out of six. We are almost managed to get our people to Hollington without any damage to them. But I think this is where Terwilliger is going to use his ability on me. Absolutely, I was going to say. Um, this, I think he recognizes the romper, mm-hmm. and he knows it's you in there. And uh, oh, and I, I want him to recognize me. I definitely, I, I so want him. I this that was specifically like there's no mistaking that laser cannon and that that ro- like this beat up mech. There's no mistaking it. And I was like, I was like, hey, hey, buddy, how are yeah. you? How are you, buddy? He comes over the comms, and he said, uh, what was your call? A dollar sign, right? He says, mm-hmm. dollar sign. Looking to get the rest of your skin burned off? Yeah, you couldn't finish the job then. You won't be able to do it now. Some things never change. <laughs> Time to rectify my mistake then. And so as he, like, swerves around your massive laser beam... Mm-hmm. He fires uh, two incendiary missiles at you. And so because you were in a risky position, you take level two damage Mm -hmm. um, a flame. And I am going to use my Battleborn ability. I'm going to declare special armor and expend that armor to reduce harm in attack or combat to reduce harm from an attack in combat. Nice. So, yeah. Um... What does it look like as you... I think I think you just completely avoid this damage. I think that, like... So I have these wing-mounted... I have this wing-mounted weapon array, right? Like, I have these wings, the idea of which is... The romper accidentally is a, a super jumper, and so flies, but sort of glides. They're not really, like, jet wings. They're just sort of glider wings. So the designers mounted it with all sorts of weapons. Among these weapons is literally just an anti-missile defense ray. And I think he... I think Terwilliger deploys these missiles and i say see this is what i'm talking about when things never change and i smash a button and like sparks fly (laughs) and just like sparklers just everywhere and the missiles get tripped up and explode in midair and i'm just like you never learn you never you never studied that's your problem just he just growls at you over the comms and i i hop onto my private channel we need one. We need one last good distraction to take this home. You think you got this? Uh, yeah, sure thing. They already hate me, <laughs> so. Um. So, so great. It's your natural habitat. You're fine. Ah, thanks. Uh, so I, I'm going to light up Terwilliger with the with my uh, machine guns. Just mm-hmm. Absolutely open fire on him, and uh, quickly dodge all over the place with my, uh, I'm gonna invoke my hot boosters quirk. Mm-hmm. Um, so, let's see. Yeah, I'll, I'll roll battle for this. I think that that's what I I'm doing. I think that makes sense. I think you're, du- you're more, you're more directly engaging than trying to destroy or anything. Yeah, so what's my, uh, position and effect? Uh, I think your position actually isn't bad. I think it's, it's, I think it's risky at worst. If not, yeah. if not, it might even be controlled at this point. What do you think? I think it's probably risky because I there's so. still Terwilliger's allies who yeah, are there's, Yeah, he's got, he's got a gang, and I think, like, even if he is distracted, you know, you, you're still, you're, you're still trying to catch the eyes of the others. And they yeah. all hate you. So I would call it risky. Oh, um, can I have a flashback? First, yeah, please. Yeah, so I think what I, while Sir Williger was focusing on you, I think I called in our rover fire team in their own jets to engage Sir Williger's allies. Does that uh, work yeah, for you? Yeah, that sounds great. That sounds awesome. I love it. Okay, so how much stress does that cause, cost me? Uh, I'm going to call that... 
Two stress. Two stress. Okay. Um, so does that improve my position? I think so. Effect? I think that I think that puts it at controlled because you're only trying to catch you're only trying to catch the eye of Terwilliger, and no matter how much he hates you, he hates me way way more. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, all right. And I was also invoking my hot boosters. Um, for let's see, I'm going to take an extra die for that, mm-hmm. and then what's my effect? Um, call the standard, I think. Okay, my machine guns are fine because I'm the ace, so that bumps it up to great. Fabulous. So I am going to roll uh, controlled great battle with two dice. Hey, that's a six. Perfect. Um... Does Terwilliger use his rival move on me, or...? I think he does. So what does he do? Uh, I think... I think it's sort of a robo... I think his mech... We haven't... I haven't described it, but it's sort of a robotech situation. So jet that turns into a humanoid that turns back into a jet. Mm Mm-hmm. And I think he deploys this just in time to, like... Just, like, jam you with, like, a knife... Like, a knife hand. Oof. So just shank you right in the side. So what's that? Uh, what's that? I'm taking uh, more damage. Um, I will say you can take two damage, or the two of you can like tumble into, can basically both crash in the ground, and uh, be kind of isolated and away from the crew, like and away from the group. Uh. I'm going to use the um, the cavalry hard points that we have mm-hmm. because we're mechanized cavalry, which lets me declare two free load of weapons or armor. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to declare another point of armor. The civil okay. unrest is more armored than it would appear to be mm-hmm. for something just, that flies. It, it just like just like that brown suit. Yeah, and uh, so I think the knife like skitters across the surprised armor plates. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then we cut, so is that cut the cut the cut the axle? Like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> this kid's great. And uh, so I think does that fill up the clock? I believe my, it does. Yeah. So the convoy has managed to reach Hollington safely, and I think we get over the comms. We get um. Uh, uh, Dr. Panel says, uh, All right, boys, thanks for the help. We've managed to get to Hollington safe and sound thanks to you. We didn't even, not even a single bullet came our way. That's, uh, you certainly did your job better than expected. (laughs) We'll, uh, look you up in the future. Yeah, yeah, you will. (laughs) All right. Talk to you later. All right. And they uh, end the comms. Um, So do we want to try and have an escape scene, or do we want to end the mission here and just say we escape? I think, like, I think... I think we can end the mission here, because I think between, like, the knife just doing nothing, and that gives... I think that probably gives you an opportunity to basically, like, push off of Terwilliger, and then that gives me a chance to, like, you know... De- decouple, dehook the uh, the the artillery mode on romper, and just kind of like rear back, jump up, and start gliding, and then I just send him a message. Until next time, maybe bring some acid. It seemed to work better for you in the past. Dollar sign. And we sail off safely, and we arrive back at the armory. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> I think. We uh, get out of our cockpits, and I'm just, like, holding my hands up, like, looking at them as they're, like, burned, and I'm just, like, blowing on them, and I and say, I th- oh, go ahead. I think I, I I stop for a second, and I look, and, like, I lower the mask, and I look, like, visit, like, my smirking, my smirking, smiling facade has completely dropped, 
and I reach into my jack, into the inside of my, like, dress jacket, and I pull out two, like, synthetic leather gloves. I hand them over, like, it's a good look. It'll match the suit. Uh, I say, I'll take you up on that offer later, but right now, I need to get these tended to. Oh, yeah, right, for later, <laughs> but uh, with, the, with the scarring, it'll, right, yeah. Uh, I'll, fi- <laughs> I'll fix you a drink in the meantime. I've got a new cocktail that I've been working on that I think is going to be really special. Ugh, your cocktails are the worst, but let's see what it does. I could use a stiff drink. (laughs) Yeah, uh, you'll get used to that on the next job, kid. And I think we walk into the the armory, and I think that's game. Yeah. That Uh, was fun. (laughs) Yes, it was. Uh, So normally, after a mission, we go through getting paid and going over trust with the faction, see who's pissed off at us now because of what we did, Mm -hmm. see who likes us more for helping them out. And uh, then we'd go into downtime and hang out to relieve stress, repair our vehicles, get treatment for our injuries, and pursue our long-term projects, whatever they might be. Uh, But that's uh, something for a longer-term play. Mm -hmm. And that was super, super fun. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. That was uh, a delight. <laughs> I'm glad you enjoyed. Oh, I'm this. I'm, I'm very glad. Thank you so much for coming on the show and playing this. This was a this was a blast. Thank you for having me. So real quick, before we wrap up, where can people find you and your work online? Uh, well, you can find me on Twitter at not an in. That's uh, N-O-T-A-N-I-N-N. Um, if you want to find the rules for Beam Saber, you can find them at tinyurl.com slash beam saber. The rules are completely free at this time, at least until I start uh, looking into uh, publishing with art and proper layout mm-hmm. and so forth. Um, if you enjoyed what you heard here, uh, you can go to uh, beamsaber.libsyn.com because every Tuesday at 6 p.m. I stream a uh, Beam Saber game that's been ongoing for a couple months now, and then turning the audio from the stream into edited podcast, which if you want more Beam Saber, you can watch the VODs on the Twitch or YouTube or uh, check us out in the MP3 format, although the MP3s are couple months behind mm-hmm. because i've been busy with other things to uh get around to editing yeah them. i i know that feel <laughs> but uh, seriously thank you for coming on the show this was an absolute delight and now i'm gonna throw it over to me in the future so that he can wrap up with the show take a future me thanks past me and thanks again to austin for coming on the show that game was so freaking cool i so want you to check the show notes Go to Kickstarter, back Beam Saber, get your copy of the game, because it is super cool. And then I want you to come back this Thursday, two days from now. Check out the next episode of Party of One on the feed, uh, the downtime portion of this session, where we will pick back up with our heroes as they pursue their big projects and they plan out the next mission ahead of them. It's a very cool episode. I'm really, really excited for you to hear it. In the meantime, like I said, go back Beam Saber on Kickstarter. Go follow Austin at not an in on Twitter. Then while you're on Twitter, follow us at party of one pod, like the show on Facebook at facebook.com slash party of one podcast, head to our discord community at bit.ly slash party of one discord. Check out our merch store at bit.ly slash party of one merch. And if you'd like to support the show financially, you can support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash Jeff Stormer, which promotes not just the podcast that I produce, but the games I design, the community stuff that I do, the articles that I publish, all that stuff is supported through the Patreon And it helps other people get paid. I mean, they're going to get paid either way, but it helps it not come directly out of my pockets, which is nice. Another way you can support the show is by supporting the other podcast that I create, All My Fantasy Children, which is a tabletop-inspired character creation, storytelling, and world-building podcast powered by you. Every week, my best friend Aaron Catano says, and I take a listener-submitted prompt. We spin it into an original fantasy character, and we populate a shared universe one story at a time. New episodes drop every Friday-ish, at oneshotpodcast.com. Party of One is produced and edited, as always, by Jeff Stormer and Jen Frank. The Party of One logo is by Evan Rowland. Music for this episode, information on all of which can be found in the show notes, come from the following. Infinite Lives by Mega Ran, featuring the D&D Sluggers. Ahead of the Curve by Otis Galloway. Rhinoceros by Kevin McLeod. 
Space Fighter Loop by Kevin McLeod, Hit and Smash by Raphael Crux, Heroes in the Sky by Raphael Crux, and Neo Western by Kevin McLeod. Like I said, all of that can be found in the show notes. If you'd like to inquire about advertising rates, press coverage, coming onto the show's guest, or having your game featured on an episode of Party of One, you can email me at partyofonepodcast at gmail.com. And that's it for me. Until next time, thank you so much for listening. Remember to fight the force of fascism every single day. Remember that self-love and self-care are radical and defiant acts of resistance. And as always, party on, everybody. Never gonna die.